Hey guys, how's it going? To be charismatic, you have to risk being offensive. Now, what do I mean by this? Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably somebody who feels very caged. You're somebody that's afraid to put their real selves out there. To be charismatic, you have to risk being offensive. Now, why is this the case? What we're gonna be discussing this video is true charisma. We're gonna be talking about how to actually truly develop that personality, develop a persona of yourself that is very engaging to others, that people are just drawn to. Now, despite what you think, what a lot of people think, people think that somebody that's charismatic is loved by everybody. You think that being a charismatic person, being somebody like a Robert Downey Jr., he never gets fucking rejected. People just love him, like left and right. If you were to talk to Robert Downey Jr. right now, he would be your best friend. Now, what if I told you Robert Downey Jr. is so fucking charismatic because he risks being offensive, because he doesn't really care what you think about him, because he doesn't care what anybody thinks about him, because anybody that comes into his circle, anybody that comes into a guy like this' circle, is meant to be there. And to be honest, there's a lot of people that are not worthy of being in those positions. Now, the problem is that a lot of guys, us, a lot of guys, women, people in general, when they try to be charismatic, what do they do? They try to be congenial. They try to be the color gray. They want to be the Disney Channel cartoon. They want to be that guy that just everybody loves. Because who likes rejection? Nobody likes getting fucking rejected. Nobody likes it when somebody says no to you. You don't like it when somebody tells you you are not enough because you take it to heart because it hurts. And you start thinking that this is your identity. It starts kind of seeping in a little bit. And the more you get it back to back to back, the more worthless you tell yourself you are. All right, so in this video, what we're gonna be talking about is how you can fix this. What is the core and the soul of this? How can you become more of a charismatic person engaging as fuck? All right, with that being said, let's get into the video. Uh, yeah, I confess, father, I confess. You have a lifetime of traumas, all right, between yourself, between the things that people are doing to you, between people are saying to you, and it does compile over a period of time, and what happens? As people tell you more and more, if you keep bowing out and you keep just being passive to every single thing that happens to you, you start constricting. You can't be that. Oh, you can't be the wild fun guy because somebody laughed at you and made you feel like an idiot when you tried to do that before. So now, no more fun guy. Oh, I can't be... The guy that is very sexual, because when I was trying to be sexual with that one girl, she called me creepy. Oh no, maybe she rejected you. Maybe she had a boyfriend, and you're like, oh no, woe's me. So you keep constricting, you keep getting tighter and tighter, until eventually you built yourself a fucking tight-ass prison. Because all you did was bow out, bow out, bow out, because you're afraid of getting rejected. You're afraid of putting yourself truly out there, of expressing what you're really thinking, and thinking that it's not enough. You thinking you're not enough. You're like, well, if I say that, I could offend her. If I say this, what is everybody gonna think of me? If I do this, how is everybody in my town gonna, like, what are they gonna talk about behind my back? I mean, are they gonna hate me? Am I gonna be the weirdo? I don't wanna be the fucking weirdo. Now, I'm gonna say this, honestly, if you guys do this to the T and you do what I'm saying, you're not gonna be the fucking weirdo. If anything, you're gonna be the charismatic cool guy. Because this is how charismatic people think. All right? now. Contrary to what you guys are doing, you guys are letting these people constrict you. Now, you guys need to start getting to the core of what you're thinking. And oftentimes, it has come down to the ego. Now, for a lot of you guys, you guys don't know what an ego is. Ego is kind of a... I feel like psychologists have a hard time describing it too, oftentimes, because anytime I ever study this, in general, respond to it in a vague kind of way. So, this is my interpretation of an ego. Okay, so essentially, this is you. Okay, so this is the little baby you were born as. This is the little child that was just nothing but happy. Okay? Now, as you're growing up, let's say <clears throat> you're happy, happy, happy. Then trauma hits. Trauma fucking hits. And now from here on out, you don't think that you are enough. You're afraid of getting rejected. You're afraid of people not loving you. You think that if you're not good enough, that somebody's going to leave you. You think that something bad could possibly happen. Now, everything, every trauma, everything that you do, I'm going to tell you this, is for love of the tribe. Now, we are as a, we're a species. We're apes. But we're what is called homo. Now, all homos, what are we all <laughs> homos? <laughs> oh, my God, I'm 12. I just get offended. And it teaches them how not to see things from their point of view. Now, the trauma, like I was saying, comes from wanting to have love from the tribe. It's wanting to have friends, wanting to have girls. Why? Because back in the day, we have 6 million years of evolution telling us that if you're not a part of the tribe, you're not a part of this group, you're separate, you're weak, you're dead. Nobody is outside of our kind of species. A person like us, if, we, if I was on an island by myself, I'd go crazy. We're built to be in this 
this, um, this link. Now the problem is, is that something happens to you at some point and you're like, oh no, love can be taken away. I can be kicked out of the tribe. If I'm kicked out of the tribe, I'm dead. So what do you do? You develop a character to express the outside tribe to protect yourself. Now this also, the reason you do this mainly is to protect your confidence. Confidence is a big decider and if people follow you, if they like you, people want more of a confident person and people see that on stage every so often. They're, they see that somebody's very confident in their craft. Confidence is a very sexy trait and people want to follow you because of it. Now, what do a lot of guys do? I have had sex with thousands of fucking girls. Like every girl I ever talked to thinks that her ex fucked hundreds of girls because every dumbass in the world is like, or like thousands. That's the best one. When a guy tells me he's fucked thousands of girls, you guys have no idea how much work you have to put into actually fucking thousands of girls. Like it is immense, man. Nobody has the fucking time. Anyways, long story short, they lie about this because you can't get better at things, right? You can't get better. So you lie about it. You tell everybody you can fuck a thousand girls. You tell everybody, again, as I've said a thousand times, you can win any fight. Why? Because you're trying to express to your friends that you're a person of value, that you're somebody that you should keep around. You're putting up this facade, this face ego, you're building this and you start believing it yourself. Now, when it comes down to it, so this is actually why a lot of people have approach anxiety. They build the frame that they're not a creepy guy. They build the frame that they're a socially intelligent person. They build the frame that they are somebody that doesn't rock the boat, that there's somebody that is just very pleasant to be around. They, they, they make the mentality and the ego back up the actions. You don't approach, why don't you approach? You don't approach because you're not a creepy guy. And then the second that somebody like you approaches, somebody like me approaches, look at that guy being creepy over there. I'm not being creepy. It doesn't matter how much fun the girl's having in their head, they watch you doing this, you're being creepy. You're being oh so fucking creepy. But get that, like I said, anybody, this is not just this, this general subject, anybody that shames another person, it's coming back to them. It's constantly, what does that say about me? And how can I express their bills? That person's doing that, I'm gonna shame them in this way, point them out, and really I'm talking about me. It has nothing to do with you, they didn't even give you a second thought. You're not even an entity in their brain. And for the most part, that's actually a cool thing. Nobody really gives a fuck about you, nobody thinks about you. I think this is just, again, ego. You think you're the center of the universe. You're walking up the street and you imagine everybody as you're walking is just looking at you and judging you. Again, nobody gives a fuck. Unless you're like walking up and down the street in like a fucking gorilla costume. Uh, nobody gives a fuck. Now, if you guys wanna fix this, what are some things you can do? Now, there's a lot of misconceptions in society nowadays and a lot of people have an ego about being hard workers or not being enough and somehow because now they're not enough and they're chasing it, they're a good person. So like I had the same exact thing, which is why, which is why I'm bringing this up. So when I was younger and even up until recently, I, I stressed myself out so fucking much. I would beat myself down. I'd make myself terrified of the consequences of if I didn't. <laughs> Honestly, you can't see with the lighting, but I am starting to like even get gray hair. I'm only fucking 27 years old. Like this was not a healthy decision to push myself this fucking hard. And to be honest, as of three months ago, it's completely burned me the fuck out. I could not continue to keep pushing that kind of stress down my throat. Honestly, you get such an immense amount of adrenal fatigue from doing this, it's, it's unsustainable. The only way that you can push yourself by doing something like this is to push yourself or draw yourself with positive emotions, focusing on the happiness, the fun, the pleasure, the great things you'll get from approaching or like um, going about your life and doing your work. The trick I'm gonna teach you guys is that other people's emotions are their problem. Now, let me explain. Now, the big thing with a lot of people is, is whenever you're talking to somebody, you are watching their expressions, especially a lot of pickup artists, guys. We are very, oftentimes, anxious people. We're very, we have very overdeveloped amygdalas. We're, <laughs> for a lot of you guys who don't, aren't into the seduction community, I apologize. Um, basically, we're all just a bunch of fucking weirdos. I promise, we're harmless. Um, <laughs> <laughs> social retards, like oftentimes, more than not. Um, <laughs> other people's emotions are not your problem. What this means is that whenever you're talking to somebody, you're not overanalyzing what they're thinking or what they're saying, you don't really care. If they feel bad, you look at it, or maybe they're treating you in a way that you are not fond of. You may, maybe you give them a look like, all right, cut that shit out, you're being weird. Instead of you like looking internally and being like, what does this mean about me? You're like, this person's being weird. Now from here, what do you do? Now, a lot of people wanna probably help the person and lift their energy up. They wanna make them happier. They wanna get them out of being sad. Do you know how you actually fix somebody's emotions? You act happy yourself. Now, obviously from a place of intellectual caring, 
but you act happy within yourself. And from here, now you can pull them out of their, their bad energy. Um, the other night, <clears throat> I was hanging out with some girl out here on the strip. And her friend pulled her into the fountain. She got fucking soaking wet. Her phone got wet. She, it broke. And anyways, we're walking back to her place and she's pissed. Anyways, I'm not caring. I'm ignoring her. I'm just cracking joke, cracking joke, 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 joke. She starts laughing and being really expressive and funny. Then all of a sudden, she's no longer angry. She's really fucking happy. And then she starts getting really sexual. And that's where it moved from there. Oftentimes, what most other guys do, oh, blah, blah, blah. And they start like fucking bowing out to her or like trying to empathize with her. This is not the way to go about things. You don't empathize when somebody's in a down energy because then you start feeling the energy. Then you guys are both in the mud. However, you can be an example of somebody else and if they're an intelligent person, they're gonna see that and they're gonna rise to the occasion. That's the way that you manipulate somebody to feel a better emotion. Not by empathizing or sympathizing. It's by demonstrating to the other person and expressing it because emotions are contagious. We're a contagious species. If you're happy, other people are gonna be happy. If I'm energetic right now, if I had like a lot of fucking energy, if I got fucking pissed, people would be feeling that fucking energy. It's, it's, um, it, it's why like when I talk on camera, I don't talk in a fucking monotone voice. I don't talk like this. Because if I talk like this, nobody'd ever watch my videos. Actually, I take that back. I totally watched this video. If you're constantly trying to garner your emotions to never piss anybody off, maybe somebody's like, somebody gives you a shameful response. Somebody hits you in another place. Somebody hits you in another one. And eventually, you're just literally like, ha, 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 and you're just nothing but afraid to offend somebody. And now that you're like this, you can never truly connect with anybody. You're gonna go your entire life because you're afraid of what somebody's gonna be like shaming you. Somebody's gonna shame you because of their own insecurity. Now you're gonna be stuck to never be able to connect with a person truly. Now, when you come to somebody that shames you, again, this, you don't wanna to come to them from a place of anger or being pissed. Honestly, you need to be understanding and empathetic of their situation because they're trying to shame you. Oftentimes it's because their lives are not that great because they don't have a handle on what's going on in their own lives. So they wanna point the finger at other people to try to say something about themselves to show everybody else that they're fucking like a really high class person. You need to see through this and understand that this is not about you, it's about them. Not everybody likes a Ferrari, not everybody likes a Rolex. A lot of the times somebody will be really pissed off about the Ferrari. If sometimes people will be really pissed off about that you have a Rolex. Not everybody is made to kind of handle a high class person. All right, you draw to you what you are. If somebody's shaming you, they're not supposed to be in your ecosystem. Oftentimes, <laughs> those kind of people are probably drawing more negative people to them. Do not fucking feed into their bullshit. They wanna use you as a platform for their negative emotion. Now, this is what I mean. Whenever somebody's expressing a negative emotion or they're trying to shame you or they're trying to use anger, they're trying to bring up the sadness in you, it's usually an addictive emotion. People try to use other people for platforms to express their emotion, to bounce it off of people, to create a cycle. So I'm angry, you're angry, it makes me angrier. You build yourself up, we work each other up and now I get my addictive emotion, I get my anger. Now, why are people addicted to anger? It's a false sense of power. It also gives them a little bit of a boost of energy. One time in 10, it helps. The other nine out of times out of 10 though, Honestly, it's just adrenal fatigue, as we brought up before. Adrenal fatigue is a very big issue. It's why meditation, for a lot of us guys who are very anxious, helps out. A lot of you guys who don't have very strong imaginations, I feel like more visualization will help you guys out, but for us people who are very imaginative and we overthink things, visualization is pretty second nature for us. It'd be more meditation that help you out. There's a difference between a sensing person and an intuitive person, somebody that leans towards either. If you're a hard leaner towards intuitive like I am, meditate like a motherfucker. If you're somebody that's a very sensing that's in the real world, you don't need so much meditation because you're very present to begin with. So for you, it's really easy. For you instead, you need to do, do more visualization and focusing because you guys oftentimes, instead of like us, where we have problems with the, with, um, the sensing and being in the real world, you don't have an easy time with your imagination. So essentially what this means is that you have a hard time kind of building your life from here on to the point out. So you have a hard time envisioning a world in 10 years from now, it's completely different than right now for yourself. You can't imagine yourself having a mansion. You can't imagine yourself having a Ferrari or maybe like having a gorgeous girl or having an easy life or having a very carefree life where you actually love yourself. Now, for these kind of people, again, visualization would help. All right, guys, now what are the tools and the little tricks that I used to start breaking this up to allow myself to be more myself and be more free? First thing I do is called self-work. Now, with a lot of you guys, you guys don't understand yourselves very well. You guys don't understand your past and how it affected your present. A lot of you guys probably have like this fear that you need to go do something and you don't know why and you're, you're pushed there. There's like a, like, a, like a physical, like you feel anxious if you don't or you feel angry or you're 
anytime there's like a negative emotion in your life, really kind of break it down, go into it and try to figure out where it comes from. Now, for example, me, I have approached girls now for eight years obsessively, tens of thousands of women. And I've done this and I've broken down field report, field report, field report. And I'm one of the best in the world at this. Now I got here in a very dirty way. I got here with fear. I got here with jealousy and I got here with a lot of sadness. And I pushed myself sadness that I was never going to achieve or have the life that I wanted. That was forever going to be depressed and dead. Um, <laughs> way to lighten the mood that I would have no friends because guys like a guy who has girls around him. If he has a hot girl, then he's a cool guy, right? All the cool guys always have a hot girl. And I want friends because I never had friends before. And this is where it comes down to. It's, it's partially also for the girl too, but it, I, in the end, it came down because the fact I wanted friends. <clears throat> now, when I was a little kid, I was a very empathetic you know, young child. I, I wanted to really help a lot of people out. And I remember that I was hanging out with my friends. We're all like the kind of the goofy kids in the class. And it was, oh, this is when I was really young. Um, there was this really dorky, nerdy kid in a wheelchair and stuff. And there were all these other like kind of misfit kids that none of the other cool kids really talked to. And so one day I was like, fuck this. I'm going to become friends with them because they need more friends. And so I started becoming friends with them. Then one day my friends stopped talking to me. They're, they decided I wasn't cool enough and it really hurt my feelings. And from that point on, this was like in third grade. From that point on, I was a nerd, never had any friends. And <clears throat> I remember all the pain of all my years, not having the best grades, being super shy and timid, being super stressed out all the time, being terrible at sports. My dad pushed me so hard in sports that <clears throat> I felt like I could never have any friends and I, and I ended up not having friends. I manifested my own destiny. Now, <clears throat> from here, I had a huge pain body and I wanted friends and I wanted people to be around me because I was so tired of being alone. Then I learned about game and I learned that I could get girls. And if I got girls, I could have friends because all the cool kids have friends. I was holding myself back from what I was doing as a kid from something that doesn't even affect me anymore that I even fucking care about. Literally this thing that I don't even care about anymore still affects me to this day. And I looked into it and I was like, okay, you need to extinguish that. That's no longer a problem. And I, and I thought about it for a bit and it just went away. Literally the act of me focusing on it made it kind of clear up. Now <clears throat> I've also done a lot of self work. I've gone out and approached tens of thousands of people. I've had a lot of years of me pushing myself and kind of learning that <laughs> Basically, I proved a lot to myself up to this point. I have a lot of like stuff to hold my, my chalice upon. So as I just did right there, I broke it down to the core of why I did it. I figured out why I was chasing women so hard. And now I can loosen up and I can just talk to a girl instead of like trying to constantly like gamer, gamer, pick her up, pick her up, pick her up. Now I can talk to her like a person. And I'll say this for a lot of you guys who watch me because of my pickup channel, my girls are way fucking cooler than they were previously. Like these are the girls that I couldn't get prior to this. These are the girls that everybody dreams about that you guys like that the majority of men are like fucking fantasizing about. I get those now because I have no ego. Break it down, find out what the core of what it is. And by you recognizing the core, now you can go about changing the beliefs. So that's what I want you guys to do. Find the core of it, change the beliefs that are circled around that area. And then from there, work through the trauma and focus goes, energy flows. Notice it's not a powerful or helpful thing in your life. Now, the one thing and the final point I want to make on this, it wasn't until I made this decision to finally let go, to finally just 110% be myself and say whatever I want, whenever I want, because I found this out about myself. Now, another cheap way to break your ego, if you guys want to see what I'm talking about, is to do something really goofy. Now, you're telling yourself you're James Bond, right? You're, you built yourself this little prison. I'm James Bond, I'm the cool guy, and that's what girls really want, because Hollywood tells you that. So, I'm James Bond. No, break it, do something stupid. Do a fucking stupid dance. Ho, 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 ha, 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 ha
hot. Hot. Don't let anybody dumb you down, all right? You're not some fucking Disney cartoon, okay? You're a very complex structure and you're allowed to express whatever the fuck you want. If they don't like you, they're not meant to be in your social circle. Anybody that tells you that something you do is weird or not right, that tells you that you're a fucking freak because of it, have sympathy for them. Understand it's not you they're talking about, it's them, all right? This is not about you. Relax, nobody gives a fuck about you. And in the end, that is the most honestly, truly beautiful thing about this. If you work it out in the right way and you think about this positively. If nobody cares about you, why can't you do what you want? Like, what is stopping you? All right, guys, with that being said, peace fuck. out. Blood and sweat up on my chains. Remember walking in the rain. Looking at my life each and every night. Wonder when the shit could change. Throw my heart up on the stage. Look at the new waters in the game. Y'all supporting garbage, I'm ashamed. To be on the same list of those names. Every time I drop flames. And your songs sound the same. Maybe rappers not your day.